My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer, coming at you from San Francisco. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. I got people make friends. I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to teach, but to entertain and coach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Now, for the past couple of years, we've had shortages all over the place. That's how you get rampant inflation. When there's not enough of anything, everything gets more expensive. But not anymore. Now I'm on glut watch, and we got a big glut today. A glut in hard goods, things that go into your house, appliances, toasters, mix measures, televisions. Even as that's terrible for the company stuck with this excess inventory, in this case, Target, it is terrific for you, the American consumer. Not to mention the stock market. And that's a major reason why after down opening, where people were confused, the Dow only gained 264 points. Uh, S&P advanced 0.95%. NASDAQ climbed 0.94%. Yep, Target just slashed its second quarter operating margin forecast because they've got too much stuff on their hands, which means they have to cut prices. And that is music to the Federal Reserve's ears, because when they see goods coming down in price, they can hold off on raising interest rates too aggressively, which means we might get a soft landing. Remember, the chief enemy of this market is inflation. But this Target news is one more sign that inflation might be peaking. And if inflation's peaking, then we can buy a ton of stocks we couldn't buy before. Buy, 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 buy. Namely the kind of high-quality tech stocks that I'm out here in Silicon Valley to identify. No wonder they had some spring in their step today. Now, if you look at any chart of any tech stock, especially the ones that are losing money and trading at high valuations, you'll see they all broke down when the Fed declared war on inflation way back in November. These junior growth tech stocks are all about the potential earnings many years down the road. And when inflation's out of control, we know those future dollars will have less purchasing power. But when we see supply cuts developing, it means price cuts are on the way. It means inflation's calming down. And the Fed has a better chance to engineer that fabled soft landing that we're ho- so hoping for if we're bullish. Which brings us all the way back to Target. This morning, Brian Cornell, the excellent Target CEO, said he has to dump billions of dollars in inventory to clear the store so he can bring in new merchandise for the fall. Where does that inventory go? Brian didn't go into specifics when I talked to him last night. But what matters is that these goods, which have been premium price points, much of it imported, are now going to be priced at a discount somewhere in an outlet near you. Target's news was actually big enough to affect the bond market, sending interest rates down because the pin action out of retail can be used if it's as big as Target. Think about it. Think about it. If this happened to Target, it's almost certainly happened to other retailers, even those ones that supposedly don't have any inventory, like Amazon. And that's why the whole retail edifice got hit again today. But let's consider what all this means for you and your portfolio. For seeing as we're on glut watch and we finally found one, the first one, that means the Fed can be more measured, more judicious in its rate hikes. Now, they're not going to stop tightening. We need, say, uh, mortgage rates to cause mortgage applications to go lower. But it's less likely that we're going to get hit with a series of brutal 50 basis point rate hikes. Uh, That means we can look at some of the more beaten down tech stocks as long as they're profitable. It means a stock like ServiceNow. Remember, we we spoke to Bill McDermott last night, or Broadcom, which we'll have on later in the show, have become more attractive. Again, these stocks are all about the future earnings, less inflation, more future dollars, more valuable. It also means that a spectacular quarter from the likes of a company like Salesforce.com will finally be rewarded with a much higher stock price for the same reason. And that stock's down huge. The most richly valued stocks have become, no, they've been hit the hardest since November. Once interest rates started coming down, they can bounce back the hardest. And that's why we stay in them. Remember, I told you to stay the course. Now, I want you to keep that in mind when you see these stocks. They made a U-turn today. It's all about what happened at Target. And you can't find out otherwise um, it, 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 other than to realize that Target sent interest rates lower. But Salesforce.com, which we own for the Chapel Trust, is a stock that's become a lot more attractive in a world where inflation is moderating and long-term interest rates are coming down. Although Salesforce might look too expensive in a world of rampant inflation, you take away that inflation and suddenly it looks like a growth at a reasonable price. And remember, I'm using Salesforce as a metaphor. There's so many stocks that we follow that, have, that are, particularly in tech market, that are highly valued. And these become less highly valued in the sense that they're less rich. 
That means they're better for you to buy, less risk. What else can you buy? I have to tell you, even though Target made real mistakes, they also had some very difficult logistics problems, ordering a lot of merchandise that came late after it already gone out of fashion. So I'm willing to ask for some of the weakness here, even as many people never believe that. The bears will uh, say people can't afford to shop at Target because the price of gasoline is so high. This crowd will eagerly buy the recession-proof stocks. So even though we've got some evidence that the economy is weakening, they'll think that, well, you know what? It, it means that you have to buy companies like healthcare, consumer products, food and drugs. Sure enough. Jam Smucker, the food company, reports a decent quarter, gives a good outlook, and then the stock soars. Eli Lilly, which wasn't rewarded yesterday for its breakthrough weight loss drug, gets rewarded sky high today. Health insurers so weak lately, finally on fire. As for drugs, J&J gets some lift after weeks of heaviness. That's the magic elixir of lower rates talking. Not anything new at the companies, as much as we might want to believe otherwise. It's interest rate specific. Then there's another camp that believes everything revolves around the price of the pump. These guys hold it as self-evident that gasoline and heating oil and air conditioning bills will send us back into a recession. See, they don't care about the electric cars or the rise of remote work. They just look at oil prices and say, well, come on. There can be no hope for a soft land. Instead, we'll be crash landing. These people take action, too. See, they love every oil and gas stock. Now, something strangely I agree with, because we bought more oil today for the charitable trust. And if you subscribe or become a member of the uh, investment club, you see the investing club takes action intraday, like on this particular group. Uh, now, uh, I regard it as somewhat of a hedge to the rest of our portfolio when we buy one of these. Uh, but we like the big integrated, it's like an Exxon or a Chevron. But we also like the smaller producers, like a Devon or a Coterra. If you're managing your own money, and I know many of you are, I'm telling you that you have to own oil stocks here, even after this rally. Wall Street recognized that, which is why so many energy stocks hit new highs today, even as so many other people felt that maybe inflation could be peaking. Of course, this market's so darn fickle that this whole move could reverse when we get the big consumer price index number at the end of the week. Remember the game plan on Friday? I told you that's the one to watch. That could drive long-term interest rates higher again, putting this whole move on ice, likely causing another leg down in retail. Higher rates are no friend of health care either. But because I've set myself up as a glut watcher, I simply can't be negative about what we just heard from Target. It's too big. I think this forecast cut is even good for Target itself, a stock that has now come down 42% from its high. Short term, look, I, I'm no fan of retail. This period is going to be brutal, and the charitable trust stocks that we have in retail are terrible. There's just too much of the wrong merchandise in the system. Merchandise bought for the stay-at-home economy when we now have a back-to-normal economy and a travel economy. This is the time for luggage. <laughs> luggage. And it's suitcases. It's time to sell cosmetics. People go out, they dress up. Good thing we have ELF Beauty on tonight, the nation's fastest-growing makeup company. But the real green light here is on the beaten-down text we are examining why we came out of here. They might deserve a bit of a resurgence if they have profits and a total romp if they have buybacks and dividends like Broadcom, which we also have on the show tonight in a very rare appearance by CEO Hop Tan. The bottom line, look, I wish it weren't as simple as black and white as buy growth stocks when interest rates go down or simply as buy oil. But that's exactly how it is. So please embrace it. This is not a subtle market. I don't want you to overthink it because sometimes it can be easy. Let's take calls. Let's go to Josh in Florida. Josh. Jim, I'm looking to start a long-term position in Bed Bath & Beyond and wanted to get your take on whether or not I should start that before the earnings call or wait till after the upcoming earnings call. I, I think Mark Tritton is a very good merchandise manager, but I haven't liked anything I've seen when it comes to the balance sheet, when it comes to the buyback, when it comes to the technology behind the scenes. So I'm going to tell you that as much as the stock looks very, very cheap, and it is uh, historically, it's not cheap on an earnings basis. So I cannot recommend a company who's losing money like they are. Okay, look, guys, this is not a subtle market. I don't want you to overthink it. On Mad Tonight, the San Francisco check tour continues. The ride-sharing companies have struggled to rebound along with the greater economy. And I'm digging into the highs and lows with the co-founder and president of Lyft. Then ELF can beautify your face. 
but what can it do for your portfolio? I'm taking a closer look with the company's top brass. And amid the tech tumble, Broadcom has held up much better than others, from a stock buyback to a top and bottom line beat to a great acquisition. I'm finding out what's about to come with the CEO. So stay with Kramer, coming to you from San Francisco. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.